U.S. Air Force PJs. How do they stack up with the rest of SOCOM? Let's go. It's called Superman School, and it has one of the highest dropout rates of any special ops force in the U.S. military. Nine out of ten men who try never become wow. Air Force pararescuemen. A test like your military, you're, when you're going to quit, you're going to break. Because like the end state is when your buddy's dying and stuff's sitting are you going to be that guy that needs You know, what did you look for as a team sergeant for those young guys? And I looked for the dudes that were hungry, right? That they would get the team and they just, they couldn't get enough. They were just, give me more, give me more. And... Figure this pipeline's two years. They got to go through jump school, dive school, combat medic school, selection school. I mean, there's so much on this pipeline. Take a look in the description. You guys ever met any PJs? I bet one. That was after I got out. And if I didn't, I didn't pass them appropriately or I didn't give them enough work, like they would finish it and then like, hey, what, what do we need? And they're either helping other dudes or they're, you know, you're having a radio, learning how to program it, just they're hungry and I can't give them enough at some point. Their mission, responding anywhere around the world at a moment's notice to save lives. To figure their mission is to be the super duper medic, but to be able to get there. So that's where all the training comes in. So they got to jump out of planes, climb mountains, dive to get there. And once they get there, they got to protect themselves and who they're trying to save. They got a real tough mission. They don't come back with the goods, the person alive. They probably don't feel like it's mission complete. So essentially we get called out anywhere at any time to rescue someone. It could be in, in the mountains of Afghanistan. It might be out in the middle of the ocean or it could just be here in the local community, a lost hiker. Oftentimes that's when we get the call. So we train to jump in, to do a dive mission in. Uh, oftentimes we fly in helicopters to get to, to the objective. And so, you know, yesterday we were doing some parachuting. It's usually one or two guys that are on our team and we have to jump out to an austere environment, you know, really detached from, from the main base. And so we get to practice parachuting and mountain climbing, diving. It is intense. It requires you to be really focused. It requires a lot of recurrency training. You know, guys really have to kind of be on, on top of their game day in and day out. A lot of things to break in that pipeline. You figure you get rolled back at one of these courses. You could be in this pipeline for three years. Can you imagine that? Put that in the comments. Would you stick to this? If you got rolled back once or twice, some of these courses are 37 weeks, one of them, 24 weeks, because there's multiple tiers of course you got to go through to become a PJ. You know, one of the big things that, that, that we really look for is a guy that has a never quit attitude. You know, our mission, our motto is, you know, these things we do that others may live. And so early on in training, we want to emphasize to the candidate that it's something that goes beyond yourself. You have to be willing to sacrifice everything. We look for people that are good teammates it's important you know when you're in a two or three man team it's important that you can rely on your teammates and so those are some of the attributes and characteristics that we look for you know my favorite part is you know just working alongside my brothers being a part of a mission that's you know that's special that others may live it's getting to live by the motto everything that we do all the training that we do it notice a common theme in all these military documentaries is what do i miss or what would i miss is my brothers i don't miss the job they miss being with their buddies really just culminates in getting to, to rescue that one individual who needs our help. Knowing the fact that I can be, I can directly save a soldier's life and bring them back home to their, their family, their wives, their children, that's enough for me to say, I'm gonna do this. I don't know when the PJs are used, when it's not a regular corpsman, a regular medic versus the PJs. Because in my time, I had plenty of corpsmen that would take after Marines. There's plenty of medics in the Army. You guys know when the PJs are called in specifically? <laughs> Looks like they get called in all sorts of missions. Domestic, international. I know they help recover. They used to help recover the astronauts and the capsules in the water. These guys have a broad mission set. Primarily saving people's lives. Like I said earlier, how they do it is where all the training comes into place, in addition to all the medical training they require.
being part of SOCOM, these guys have an unbelievable budget. They get to do all this training you see here, whether it's combative driving, the hey ho school, mountaineering school. These guys are after it. It's definitely a young man's game, but it's awesome to see. Awesome to be rescued by these guys when it happens. Well, being, I've, I've been pararescue for over 15 years now. Satisfaction of saving someone's life far beyond any award or any, any money that they, that they give you. Their mission is not complete unless they bring back the live guy, right? This is something else, completely different than anything else in the military in this area, where you got your traditional corpsmen, SEALs got corpsmen with them, the Green Berets and the Rangers got medics. But these guys bring it to a whole new level from what I can see. You just get the satisfaction that knowing that whatever situation arises, I mean, you, you're there to help. I mean, whether it be a car accident, a mom having a baby, you're there to help. You can do it. I'm up here because I failed. I continue to fail. I love failure. The indomitable will, if you have a belief, you can do something. The only way you grow that, like in the gym, you grow your muscles by actually exercising them. You know, to grow the individual will to become something, you hmm. must get comfortable with fear and failure. They must be your best friends. They're the only one that moves that needle of life. Every successful person, every hero you guys had was called an idiot, crazy, a loser. Another motivational speaker, but you enjoy watching this training. You must break society's status quo. But status quo is normality. It's, it's alive, but not living. It's death on a stick, guys. The belief of the individual can overcome thousands of followers. One person with a belief overrides thousands of people with just intent, jaw japping, just trying to, you know, make it to they make it. The difference is not the, the, the genetic code, the potential. It's a guy that's willing to get knocked down, finally tested on fortune, stand back up. The perseverance! to see it through, the never say die attitude. If you keep on attacking something, nothing wants to. These are the kind of guys you want on your side. Stand in front of anything that is relentless, nothing. Not only are they toting the gear, they're toting all the medical gear as well. So they've got an extra load of stuff to bring or bring you back if they are detached to your unit. I bet they do a lot of waterborne operations for down pilots in particular. That's probably one of their fortes. But I understand originally the point was we had down pilots in World War II. That's where these things originated. Down pilot, they sent in to PJs, what became PJs. They realized what skill sets you needed to do that job. Ouch.
So their theater of operation can be any theater, right? The desert, could be the Arctic, could be the jungle. Because they're there to save down U.S. servicemen. Hey, thanks for watching.